Okay, so I'm setting up my uh, EPS file that I cleaned up in Illustrator, and I'm going to put it into back into Photoshop to set it up for coloring. And so I've opened up a new Photoshop file without anything open, and I'm going to make it big enough to fill an 11 by 14 mat at 350 pixels per inch in RGB mode, that's important. And so I get this blank white space, and then I drag my EPS onto it, just like we do with our logos. And I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger, because remember, my EPS will rasterize to whatever resolution. And I place it. And now it's very, very clean, and yet a raster. Okay, so now it allows me to build a paint layer, just a new, a new layer that I put in between the black line work and the background. And I'm going to call it my flat color layer, new blank layer, move it in between the two, lock my uh, vector, even though it's a spot illustration, it won't let me edit it anyway and my background. So now when I color, let's just pick a color here, with a brush it will go behind my line work. So that's how I'm going to color my spot illustration. Okay, that is set up. And even though this is important, even though my spot or my ink work is, um, is locked and a smart vector, I can still use the magic wand to select its space if I have contiguous turned on. And then I can go to my flat color layer and pick a color and then fill it in using the paint bucket tool. And so this is ultimately what we're going to do. We have our vectors as a separate layer than our color. Our color is raster, our line work is vector, and we use the two to make our, our digital art. So I'm going to save that for the moment. It's Carl Spot Illustrations Assignment 7 as a PSD file to the desktop. Okay, But there are lots of ways to get your, your black line work before you start coloring. And so I want to show you some of those other ways. And even some ways that don't require Illustrator necessarily. Okay, so starting with my sketch. So what if I just did my pencil and I never inked it? Why do I have that? Here it is. So I just have my sketch and I have it opened in preview here. Now you'll notice with pencil there's lots of little artifacts from where I drew and redrew. Lots of kind of messiness. So even without Photoshop, if I just use the simple image viewing program preview on a Mac or the equivalent on a PC, I can adjust the levels, the brightness contrast, and I can try to, to get the, the paper white to be truly white, like so. Put that onto the desktop. So there it is. Now I'm going to open it. Actually, no, I won't even use Photoshop for this. So now, how do I get a vector just from my my black and white? pencil sketch. Well, if you go to my website, 
I try to make some of these helpful links available to you. So carlfry.com, and you just scroll down, you'll see these different program options. And this one right here in the bottom right hand corner is called Vector Magic. And it's just an online tool that helps you see what your vectors can be. So I'm going to upload an image off my desktop. and it's just my pencil sketch image. And this is basically a live tracing program. And this is just a preview of it, but you see it looks at the image and now it's going to try to trace it and classify it. And while that's going on, I'll show you how I, we can make these results a little bit better just with some simple work in Photoshop to clean up the pencil. So this is where all that compositing practice helps. So if I go to adjustments and levels, I do as much as I can to make it kind of black and white, like so, even though it's just pencil. Clean up all those artifacts and eraser leftovers. Then I can select all the white with my contiguous turned off at a tolerance of 32 with the magic wand, and then select the inverse so I just get everything that's not white. And then I duplicate it. And now this is kind of the trick, and I've had to use this sometimes, to smooth everything out so it's not as brittle and as fragmented as pencil is. I will blur it slightly using filter, blur, Gaussian blur just slightly, just to make the lines a little bit softer. And then I will duplicate that on top of itself and set those, actually, set those to multiply mode. So why don't I do that before I do all the duplicating? See my history here. So I Gaussian blur it. Then I'm going to set it to multiply, and then I'm going to duplicate it. And you'll see with each duplication of the blurred layer, it will become a little bit softer. And a little bit darker. Then if I turn off my background layer and just make it transparent, and then save that as a pencil test, <laughs> as a PNG. This would vectorize in Illustrator or in Vector Magic much better, even though it's not even inked. So you just want to work with it in Photoshop in some smart ways first. Let's see how Vector Magic's doing. It's a high res image, it's taking a while. I might need to shrink it. So let me just take the pencil test, change its size from 400 pixels per inch to more like 100 pixels per inch. That will simplify it too. And then these programs are made to kind of recognize digital artifacts and noise and to simplify that out. So let's see, let's go back to here and let's upload this smaller one, the pencil test, should go a little faster. Now I'll use vector magic a lot on my own just to get a, a quick uh, example of what something might look like as a vector. And in some ways, this algorithm is, is preferable to Illustrator's live trace. And that used to be a lot more true. Illustrator's really improved. There's just another option out there. And you can get the free preview, but the free preview won't give you an EPS file. It will just show you what it looks like. And then you do a screen grab of that preview, and then you live trace that in Illustrator to get a good EPS. So 
it is nice to have Illustrator as an option. All right, so there it is traced. And you can see it made some interesting choices, very angular. And if I didn't like how that worked, I could try it as a low quality scan. And it will smooth things out a little bit more, but I might lose some of my detail. So we'll check back on that. The other option I have, of course, is to just start with my pencil sketch. And then do a new layer in Photoshop. Maybe take the opacity down on the pencil sketch. And now with the brush tool, using my 100% opaque, fairly hard inking brush here, pressure sensitive, I can digitally ink my pencil design. instead of inking it with a real pen on tracing paper and then scanning it. And then I can trace that to a vector. Now there's a few reasons I prefer inking by hand and it's just because it's easier to turn the paper for different angles of inking. But you can actually do that in Photoshop it's under the hand tool. If you do the rotate view tool, you can tilt it so that you can get better angles for, for inking certain lines, like this curve. Especially going thick to thin. So there are lots of, lots of ways to get to the clean black line work. And as long as our line work is a vector, we're in good shape for coloring. Okay, it all takes patience, it all takes work. And then just to get it right side up again, you just click on that rotate tool. And I'm doing that on a separate layer so I can get clean inking that way. Okay, let's check in on the vector magic approach. Ah, much better, so at low quality, it smoothed it out. Remember, this was just pencil to start with. And then if I want to be even more particular about it, I can change the palette. And I can change it to two colors. I just have to be patient. And then I'll do a screen grab of that. While that's working, what I can do is think about how am I going to color this? And I encourage you to find inspiration for this project. Just like I found all those blob images. These are some of the, the Christmas card color inspirations I found. Different artwork. And part of me wants to keep it really simple like that but I don't get to show you a lot of digital coloring that way. So I kind of like the look of kind of ink that's overlaying simple colors. That works well. So I might do flat color like that. I kind of like the simplicity of this duotone. Actually, no, this is flat color, which is black and white. And a very strong and graphic. So it's good to find inspiration. I like the hand done quality of these flat colors. These are all from silkscreen cards. And they're all flat color. Then if I wanted something a little bit more complicated, different tones, I can actually steal colors from these different images when I'm ready to do my coloring. And I can get very complex if I want to with my coloring behind my black line work. So we will see. 
but ultimately it's just about how strong the shapes are.